guys, it's Julia, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my bookmarks. Okay, so I have run an Etsy shop for the past about two years called That Bookie Candles, and there I sell bookish candles and bookmarks. And I've had a lot of people asking me how I make my bookmarks, especially since I made a video about how I make my candles and what products I use. So today I'm going to be talking about the products that I use to make my bookmarks and how I make my bookmarks. So I do all my bookmarks with graphic design, which means I go to a graphic design bank, I grab the images that I want to use, I buy them. That is key. I buy the images that I want to use and then I put them and arrange them in the way that I want to have them on my bookmark and then I add a quote and that's basically it. Um, I do all of this in Photoshop. I have a pretty big knowledge when it comes to Photoshop, which makes it a lot easier. Photoshop's pretty confusing if you don't have any background in it, but basically all you really have to do is know how to use the layers and know how to use the fonts. And basically that's it. I mean, you really don't have to have a huge knowledge when it comes to making bookmarks. You just need to know what size your bookmark's gonna be and how to place the images in a way that looks good and then how to add a quote. And it's really not that hard to do. The size that I used for my bookmarks is 600 pixels by 2,351 pixels, which I'll put on the screen so you guys can get a better visual of that. Um, and it makes like the perfect rectangular shape. My bookmarks are bigger than I think any bookmarks that I've really gotten in an Etsy shop before, but I like the bigger size as far as a bookmark goes because I feel like it's harder to lose if it's bigger. Okay, so once I have gone into Photoshop, I've made my bookmark, I will then go and pull up a full size blank paper in Photoshop in eight by 11 and eight by 11 inches. And then I will add or paste five of my bookmarks onto a single page. That way I can print out five bookmarks at a time and it makes it way easier. It saves way more paper and it's just way more convenient when it comes to printing multiple books. So I do that. Generally I'll print out um, way more than I need so that I have a big stock of bookmarks because I sell them, but you don't have to do that if you're not selling bookmarks. You don't have to do it if you are selling bookmarks. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the paper that I use for my bookmarks. Whenever I started making bookmarks, I did a lot of trial and error work when it comes to paper. I tried cardstock, I tried just like photo paper that you buy at the store. I tried basic paper, but the thing that I found that works the best is this paper that I found on Amazon, which I'll have linked below so you guys can find it real easy. This is the Desktop Publishing Supplies, the cardstock double-sided inkjet gloss paper. It is double-sided, so the gloss is on both sides, which I found to be key because I do a design on the back too with all of my information on it like so and I want it to look just as good as the front does. This paper is a thicker paper so it makes for a thicker bookmark along with the thick laminate that I use which I will show you now what that looks like. I also buy this on Amazon. I have the packaging for it that I bought it with and I don't remember exactly the name for it so I'll just have post a picture up here for you guys to see what the packaging looks like and I'll have it linked below. You can buy it in like 300 page sheets for like $30 which is a really good price because if you go to Walmart you're gonna buy like 50 sheets I think for $20 so this is a good deal plus this is better quality and it's thicker so it's gonna give you a thicker bookmark when I first started I used thinner laminate sheets and it just didn't make them as strong I want to stress to you guys that there are certain papers and certain laminates that will not work together and you will get peeling for the laminate and the image will peel off the bookmark if you use the wrong kind of paper with the wrong kind of. That's why I'm doing this video because I want to save the stress for other people and I want people to realize that there is a way to get bookmarks laminated and cut them up to the design without them peeling. I have never had any issues with this paper or this laminate where it peels off. It's very sturdy. It always stays intact. It's great. Next I'm going to talk about the laminate machine that I use which is just a basic Scotch brand laminate machine that I bought at Walmart for $20. I've been using the same machine for two years. It has, yes, lasted me for two years and I have not had any issues with it. The only thing that I don't really like about it is that it is a little slow and when you're doing a lot of bookmarks that could be a pain in the butt, but I'm not sure that there really are laminate machines that are faster than this, but I do want to point out that when you are using 
all the products that I said to use, you want to make sure that it is on the highest setting when you're laminating it because otherwise you'll get bubbles and weird things inside the laminate. You want it to be as hot as it can go so that it melts completely on to the image that you're melting it onto. After I laminate my images, I then cut my images. And this is the cutter that I use. It is the Exacto swing arm cutting thing. It is a 12 by 12. What is it called? A cutter, a slicer, a blah, 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 something. I don't know, but it works really well. It's a lot faster. I used to use just a basic Fiskars cutter and that worked well for a beginner because I think this, I think this cost me like 40 to $60 to get that, which starting out is kind of hard to purchase something that expensive. And if you want to just go to Walmart, there are options. Um, I suggest I'll show you. Okay, so I cannot find the first one that I used to use, but this was the second one that I bought, and I highly recommend not using this one. The one that I bought before was kind of similar to this, which I'll link it down below so you guys can find the exact one, but it has a smaller cutting thing and you don't have to push down on it. This one you actually have to push down to get the blade to like come in contact with the paper and then slide it and it just did not work as well as the cheaper one. This one was more expensive. The cheaper one just has a little one that you drag with your fingers and cut, but it's basically the same thing. It just has a different cutting thing on it and it just works a lot better. I think I bought it for like $15 and it worked for a long time really well. You just have to change the blade often on it and you can buy like a three pack for $7. So it's not that bad, but for starting out, it works really great. But whenever you're doing high amounts of bookmarks, I highly, highly recommend getting one of the swing arm cutters because it makes life so much easier. So the last thing that I do with my bookmarks is I cut the corners. I'll just show you guys right here because these ones need their corners cut. I got this on Amazon for I believe just $20. And you can find cheaper ones, but this one is the only one that I found that will actually cut through the thick laminate that I get. So this one is key. It is the one that's sharp enough. Do not use the half inch side. It is too big and it looks weird. So I just always use the fourth inch side and whenever the edges are cut, I mean, it's just as simple as this. It just doesn't take very long. I can usually do two bookmarks at a time and that's what it looks like when it's all corner rounded. So that is basically it for how I make my bookmarks or the products that I use for my bookmarks. Here are some of the bookmarks that I have made in the past few months, but they are sturdy. They do last a long time. You can bend them and they will not crease or get ruined if they get bent. You can get minimal amounts of water on them without them getting ruined. But I've gotten raving reviews about these bookmarks. Everybody always loves the quality of them, thinks that the images on them are super bright. Which brings me to the last thing about making the bookmarks is your printer. I personally use the HP MV printer, which has HP and scent ink compatibility, which is key because if you're printing a lot of bookmarks, you are going to go through ink like nobody's business. Basically, instant ink is, it is through HP and it is ink that is sent directly to your house as soon as your printer starts to run out of ink. They send huge cartridges. Basically, when I go to the store and I spend $24 on a cartridge, it'll last me 10 pages of printing because I print on the high quality HP photo setting that comes with my printer, which makes everything like photo quality makes all the images super bright and not dull, which you will find happens with a lot of bookmarks that are sold on Etsy. And it just gives me the best quality. But if I use the cartridge that they send me through Instant Ink, I can print 30 or 40 pages, no problem. Especially even if I'm printing the same colors consistently. I only pay $15 a month to get 300 pages of print, which lasts me a lot. And I have a busy business and I print not only bookmarks, but I print candle labels as well. So that is well over the amount that I need. And if you go over, all you have to do is pay a dollar and you get 25 extra pages. I have never gone over. I have like, I think I have the second to largest plan that you can get. I think you can pay $20 a month and get 500 pages of print. And it doesn't matter how much ink you're using for each print. It just matters the page. You just print the amount of pages and that's how much you get charged. You don't get charged over that. I saved so much money guys. I was spending like $300 a month on ink and now I'm only spending $15 on ink. When I 
first heard about this, I thought it was too good to be true. And also when you buy your printer, I have the HP MV, I think I already said that, but it is important. Whenever I first got my printer, I got three months free of instant ink. So I didn't even have to pay for the first three months. I think I paid a little over hundred dollars for my printer and it was so worth it because I saved so much freaking money. I don't have to go to the store every time I need ink. It's always at my house because they send me, they send me like three ink cartridges at a time. And as soon as I start to run out of like the second one, then they send another one. So I always have ink. I never run out. I think I've run out maybe twice in the last year that I've been using instant ink. And I just called them and they literally like overnight the ink to me. So I have it the next day and it's so worth it guys. It's so worth it. I promise you, you have to use it. Okay guys, so that is really it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If anybody has any questions, questions or anything feel free to ask me down below I'm more than happy to answer any questions about how I make my bookmarks I am going to be doing kind of turning this into a series and doing some more how to make bookmark videos I'm going to go a little more in depth with how I do my designing also I forgot to mention that the design bank that I use or the graphic design bank that I use is called creative market and you just pay for what you're going to use and you get to use it and it's great and you have it forever you can use it on multiple bookmarks and it's wonderful I love it also I use Shutterstock I pay a monthly fee of $30 and I get like 10 images or you can pay 99 and get 30 images for not for free but for $99 and um, it saves you a lot of money because I think generally you can and that's like subscribing to Shutterstock because I think generally like you pay $30 and you only get three images which is quite expensive all right guys so that's really it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please like and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you guys next time